even if this was the times they are changing, not that we even knew that phrase at that point, we seemed to realize that there was something more that needed to be going on than the old ways that we were getting at that stage from our parents. We're talking about a fairly sub conformist suburban culture. Which is boring. It's bland. It is, it's Groundhog Day. Every year looks the same. Every election is a Groundhog election. And it's a highly censored society as well. I mean, the level of censorship is extraordinary. Things were going on in the world, but it was quite hard to find them out. So I just think we were coming to a, a time when there was a shift of some sort. And the more that shift started to show itself, the more that other people got interested. Underground newspaper network in America started in 1965. That's the Los Angeles Free Press, early 65. Later in 65, the most prominent of those underground press uh, publications, the Berkeley Barb, began publication. It predates magazines that become famous from the West Coast in the late 1960s, early 1970s. And it's starting to do things and say things which were neither said nor done, even in polite company. It was put together by a whole of young people, Richard Neville, Martin Sharp, they were just young men at the time. But once we got the team, you know, with the one that we're, we're all familiar with, um, I think that we were in, in heaven. Um, and it was just a matter of now, how far do we push? Australia, of all places, paved the way for the international underground press. It was controversial. Um, it, it touched on subjects that were considered completely taboo. Abortion, homosexuality. Corruption, drug use, censorship and um, racism. Police misconduct and so forth. You just didn't talk about those sorts of things back then. This is part of a group of people who are beginning to think outside the box. The wheels were turning. We're not quite sure why they were turning or for how long they would turn. There's this kind of general um, climate of, of growing cultural and, uh, and political dissent that, that Oz fitted into, but what it added was a scatological sense of humour. Yeah, I was able to actually bring out a newspaper. You're allowed to do that, strangely enough. Oz was a significant magazine both of its time, but when we look back at it 50 years later, it's, it's, a, it's a historical document now. <music> We've digitised Oz magazine and we've put it up onto Research Online which is an open access repository. So any scholar, any researcher, a random Googler can now find this truly unique Australian collection that has been made available through the University of Wollongong. I feel it was one of the greatest things Martin and Richie and I did.